Remember this? EY7410 I just bought his granddad. EY503. And it says on here Matsushita Electric Works Limited, Osaka, Japan, manufactured 1998. So this is 26 years old. Looking at it, I mean, it, you can't exactly say it looks like new, but it, it looks in fantastic condition. I know nothing at all about it. You can guess where I bought it from. I haven't got a battery. Let's take it apart and see if it can be made to work. Use his grandson. And I've got that. Oh, it's uh, got a little plastic peg that goes in that hole. And then we've got two ball bearings there. And then, so does that push? Oh, and then that push f through to there. Oh, that one's got the same little plastic peg that goes in there. And two little ball bearings. So this bit just comes apart. So how does... Yeah, well, I can't see how the wiring comes out of there then. Right, we'll plug that into our little power supply. So now we've got power. Let's see what happens when we... I'll let you see that end. Nothing. This one's black. This one's red. Plug the power supply in, and it should take off, and it's not. Oh, there it goes. Lack of use. I think that's all it is. Take that out a minute. Let's just take that one off, push that back in again. Right, let's swap them around the other way. Starting up straight away and put the other way. Right, while we're here, let's put a drop of oil. This bearing always goes dry because it is only a bronze bush. Right, let's see if that will take that oil down a little bit. Try the same at this end, although you wouldn't think this end would be so dry given that there's all that grease around it, but you never know, so I'll try and get a little bit right at the base like that. And then we'll do the same on this side. Oh! Oh, I don't like the way I wanted to stop that. That shouldn't, shouldn't have been possible, I wouldn't have thought. I wonder if we've got a dead spot on the... I don't know. It's starting up every time, isn't it? So, I don't know. Right, now, let's see if that will... These are two different sizes, so that has to go that way. Come on, why are you not going? And there, and there, that's it. And there, let's see if we've got some gear action as well then. So if we hang on to that tight, so we need to watch this end. 
Yeah, it's not starting. Oh, look at that, look, it's not starting. So we've definitely got... A, oh, there we go. Right, it's definitely struggling to turn those gears, isn't it? And can you hear anything? Sounds to me like something's clicking. I wonder if we've got a broken gear in there. Right, let's see if we can get our switch to work, because that right power on. Is that going the right way? I think it is, yeah. Oh, mind you, they both look like they're going the same way. Oh, no, that doesn't make sense. How can I stop that with my... Hmm, that still doesn't strike. No, I can stop that too easily with my fingers. I don't like that at all. Now, sometimes I say these don't need taking apart because they're okay, but this one, it did seem to be making a clicking noise. I could be wrong. So I think we're going to have a look. That's three little gears, they all look okay so far. Everything is so small, isn't it sweet? Look! Does this lift out this ring? I should imagine it does. Come on. Oh, that's unusual. I've not seen that design before. So now we've got... Oh, I guess that ring comes out. And this... Will it let me lift the whole thing out? These gears all look absolutely perfect. Looks like another ring. Oops. That way up. There's a little bit of play in there. It's funny it's got that pin running down the middle. You wouldn't think it would really need that. Well, so far, everything looks perfect. Oh, what's that? It's a tiny little flake of metal there. Get rid of that. Right. These are not usually held in tight. No, they're not. So we just poke those out. Right, so there are our little wedges that hold that part in. Come on. And that pin goes down the middle and that lifts out. Oh, not seen that design before. Alright, we've got that little ring next. Now, one, two, three of those. What have we got here? Oh, can we get this plastic ring out next? Apparently not. <laughs> I'll get out of it. <laughs> I was hoping I could do that without that. Never mind. I'll put those on there. Oh, doesn't seem to want to. What have we? We've got a pin down the middle. This piece, which 
usually just lifts out, but it will not lift out. Very strange. Oh, and we've done it. And it sounded like that bit that we couldn't get out before has just fallen out. Right, so I'll put that over there. So we've got a circlip. I can see now why we would have that little metal ring because that would give us some support for all of these ball bearings. Oh my good lord, look what we've got falling out now. Oh, one over there. So we've got a whole load of little ball bearings there. We've got this, which we don't know where that goes, and we've got two of these, and we don't know where they go. Oh, and we've got a ball bearing over here that should be over there with those. Those three ball bearings, I think, must sit down in there, so that's okay. So it's just these that we don't understand where they go. Right, there's going to be an element of guesswork involved in reassembling this, obviously, because parts of it just fell out. I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of grease in the bottom to make up for any that might have come out. Right, now these little bits here, as far as I can make out, can only go, and again it might not show very much on there, but that one can only really go there and fall down into there's a little hole there which it doesn't want to fall into but it's let me try and tip it round all right that's it and it would only go one way because of its shape and the fact that there's like a plastic ledge for it to sit on so i don't think it can go any other way because if you put it the other way it won't sit correctly on the plastic ledge so i think that must be the way that goes Oh, that one's gone straight on. That's typical, isn't it? Now, that leaves us with this little spring thing, and I, I can't work out where that goes, but there's a point where, if I put it in there between those two metal parts, there's a sort of plastic dot there sticking up, and that will tuck behind it, and that's the only thing I can think of, is that that's what it's supposed to do. But if it's supposed to push out against these two side pieces... Uh, it doesn't. Maybe it's supposed to go behind those pieces so that they come forward. Hmm. That would make sense, wouldn't it? If that went behind each one of those, that's gone behind that one. Let's try keeping my finger on it and see what that does. And then I need to get it to there. I need it to stay down. Why do you keep moving up in the air? And as soon as I let go... Ah! I think that might be it. Because now there is a piece of metal sticking out. It's very, very slightly spring-loaded. And I wonder if it sticks into those teeth. Right, that can go anyway, it doesn't seem to matter, so that can just go down. So we just need a way of encouraging this to go past sort of spring clip and then that is where we're stuck that pin went in the middle like that these went on so I'll just put a tiny dab of grease in there. I don't think it needs a great deal, to be honest. But so those, that's one, two, three, four. 
spray. Because when you think about the amount of grease that was on this before was when we took it apart, it was very little. So, and if it's lasted 26 years like that, right? This sat on the top, like a sort of sandwich, and then we had these pins pinning the whole thing together. Now, assuming it's all assembled right, these should all fit levelly and go across. So, that's. Uh, Yep. Oh! <laughs> Apart from the fact that it's missed. Why have you done that? Why have you missed? Oh, there you go. There. Oh, there we are. I didn't think that they could miss, but obviously it can. Go across to there. So you do need to put a little bit of pressure from the inside, otherwise you can actually miss. Right, that's there. But I'm we should be able to put a little bit of grease in the bottom of here. And again, I don't think we need a great deal. And then we've got all these little balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17, 18. Oh, so we've got 18 little balls that go in there. Right, then we had that ring, sits on top, acts as the other side of the case for the bearing. And then of course we have the immensely difficult clip to get back on. Right, that's not quite all the way down, but I think that will probably do. We can probably snap it into place when it gets to the right spot. Alright, tiny bit more goo on top by the looks of things and then the next thing presumably is that. Oh, on this let's just take one of those off for a minute so we can use that as a way of holding it. Is that supposed to go that way? I think that must be the part that slides to give you change of speed. Right, we'll put a, a drop more grease down there, get a little bit on all the parts. And then that should go down, and that must be how two different gear sizes for fast and slow. So that just needs to drop down in there, and that seems to be in. I like to make sure there's grease that's going to be in the centre of those so that the actual, what you might call the bearing surface, is greased. I don't think the actual gear surface makes quite so much difference, especially not with nylon and plastic, or even steel and plastic. Tiny bit more. And then we've just got this. And it did have an alignment mark, was it? Is it there? 
Right, give that a wipe. Give that a wipe. Right, I think we're more or less back in business. So I think I'll put that to one side. I didn't find anything wrong with that at all, so I'm still a little bit suspicious of this motor. Small screwdriver. Does it matter which way round this goes? It probably doesn't, but I think I'll mark it. Hope I don't lose the dot. Little dot of red there. Little dot of red there. But it probably doesn't make any difference to the motor, but it does to when the thing is assembled, because this side is a different length to that side. But like I say, I don't think the motor cares too much. But we'll see. So let's get this. And we probably don't need to take this off to examine the motor, but I'm going to anyway. Alright, so that's that off. The motor feels absolutely fine, but I'm not convinced. Right, this is just a can of um, industrial electrical contact cleaner so I'm going to squirt <laughs> as you can see a fair bit inside there and then let's get that spinning but see I'm worried that just pressure from my finger can slow that motor down. It's, uh, maybe that's okay. I don't know. Hmm, there is a bit of dirt coming out of there, so maybe we are having some effect. You see, look, I've stopped it and it's not starting straight up again. And again. Yeah, there's definitely something not right about this motor. I'm not sure what it is, but something is not right. So I think we're going to have to take it apart and have a look. And it's loose. You can see it's... Oh, it is coming off at last, I think. But it... Yeah... That, that's strange, they're not normally tight like that, so that's a little bit worrying. And the brushes... They look as good as new. Oh, I've given that a rub with some scotch Bright, but I'm still not convinced. It still looks like it's got dirty marks on it, so I'm going to try to find some really, really fine paper. Some Right, this is 400 grit, so I'm going to try that. See if I can get that and hold it on there and twist it. <laughs> Very difficult. All of those people screaming at me, you should take this apart and do it properly. You are almost certainly right. Right, I've just got a piece of copper wire jammed in there, and it holding the brushes apart so with a bit of luck that will now go on okay it's amazing that cover is surprisingly loose uh, I might need to give that a little tap down in a minute to make sure it sits down properly but I think that's on right it's gone down I think I'll just tap That's the bits where it was rest on before. I think they will probably still hold it okay. Right. Oh yes, and that's spinning much more freely now as well. Now, we will have lost, we sprayed this with contact cleaner, so we'll have lost some of the oil that was in there, so I'll try and get some of that to sink back down. But 
Oh, I can stop it, you see. Look, and then it stays stopped. I don't, I don't get that. Why would it do that? Well, I still have my doubts about this motor. Well, I lost me a red <laughs> alignment dot. <laughs> It's come off, but it turns out it doesn't matter because there's a plastic peg under here that goes in that hole. So it's uh, self-aligning. Right, so that's all on there. And of course it does matter because like I said, this will only go one way. Now is it because the motor won't start? Oh, not a thing, look at that, look. It won't stop. If we pull this out. Yeah, see there's... That's no good is it, like that? It just doesn't want to stop. Doesn't want to stop. I wonder if we've got a dead segment on that commutator. And if it stops on the dead segment. Oh, there we are, stopped again. Now if you watch my channel regularly, <laughs> not that I think anybody does, but um, you'll know that I actually made this little puller for pulling it, these exact gears. So, let's see if we can, it doesn't want to line up there, that's any trouble. Let's, re let's go in a bit more with that one. Yeah, this is going to jump off before it gets very far, but still, we'll keep trying. Now that's off. You can certainly feel the the magnet's in there. And it's strange because that looks absolutely fine. Never mind, we'll do some measuring. But never mind, we'll try resistance. Right, so that's good connection. Right, what have we got? Well, we've only got three. So we've got that one to that one. Absolutely fine. Am I far enough on here for you to see? Right, and so that one to that one. Absolutely fine. That one to that one. Absolutely fine. So we've got good connections apparently. So everything I do says there's nothing wrong with this, but in reality there is something wrong with it because it keeps not starting up when it should start up. I've just quickly modified my power bank because I got fed up with those stupid connectors and I've chucked this piece out, which is useless. And so now the only thing inside the power pack is a battery. And the motor's had just over a day for the oil to soak in as best it can and I think you'll agree that's working fine and what's better is if I take that off and go I never get any sign of a dead spot Oh, I 
we're on. Right, that seems all okay. This seems to be the speed selector, so presumably that is there when it's high and there when it's low. Not quite sure how it works, but still, let's try that on there. I'll hold that up a little bit so that with a bit of luck you'll see that if it turns. Clip that on so I can get a good look. I guess that's high speed. I can't hold all of this and lift it up and show you the end. Um, let's see if we can... Maybe you'll be able to see that going round if it goes round. Whoa, there we go. Forwards. Backwards. Oh, perhaps the battery is dying. That seems a bit odd. Let's go back to the direct connection in case it's the motor and the connections. Well, that is odd, isn't it? Why is it doing that? Look. Very slow, suddenly. Right, I'm going to have a go at knocking the contacts out that would have held the battery. It's gone down. Oh, that one's gone down. You heard it. Oh, and that one. There they are. So they're the contacts that would have held the battery. Right, lithium iron. Courtesy of Black & Decker. As I've got a Black & Decker drill that doesn't work, I might as well use the battery. Will the battery fit in there? And the answer to that would appear to be yes. Alright, I think I'm going to get rid of these connectors. So, Oh! <laughs> Couldn't have been easier, could it? That's a negative one off. I thought I was going to use the tweezers to pull it off, but obviously not, it's going to fall off. I think this must be leaded soldering, that was very easy, look at that. Right, let's see if we can lengthen the red one. Oh. <laughs> Negative is on the left, so that can go through there. Positive go through there, and then we can pull those through. The red one's a lot longer. Snip that off like that. I'm not sure it matters that it's. We could just take the point off. Take a little bit of the point off. And then I've got these. That one is going on like that. That one's gone on like that. And that will give us the ability to have a push fit connector for the wire as long as it's a good push fit connector. The negative one, the short one. Now, 
but this one is going to go somewhere up here, isn't it? And we can afford to at least make it that size. Right, I've added an extra wire to this because that's going to become the charge wire. So I've got the connector on there, just about on there. And never tried them on something like this before. Right, let's do the positive. See if we can get that one right into there. Right, charge lead added, so that's a minus charge lead, plus charge lead added. I ended up putting a little bit of solder under there and then some heat shrink and a little bit of solder on that one and some heat shrink to give me a bit of connection and then it just pushes onto the battery like it did on the Black & Decker. So that's that on there, that's on there. What we want is that, it's got to turn round and go down into there, so that's going to work okay. This has got to end up coming back up here. I'll move that over there. So these have got to come up here. And then, once these have come up to here, charge wires they need to go on the output of the BMS power in through the BMS out charge the battery we'll go for a little bit too long and hope for the best and that wasn't a wise idea cutting through both wires at once never mind nothing happened Plus. And that's minus. F plus. There. Now we need that one on. 
that's on. Right. Now, in theory, the battery will press into there. And the charge board, I'm hoping, will just slot down one side. It would be nice if we end up so that we can see the lights on the charge board, but I wouldn't want to bet on it. Right, now the next thing I want to do is, this is just, I suppose you could call it tacked on <laughs> with super glue. I can't really think of a better way of doing it because the piece of plastic I've used I turned on the lathe but it really is um, well I'm not sure what it is but it's a sort of polythene -y type plastic so I don't really think many glues are going to stick to it right, I've just made this sort of clear plastic sleeve out of a bit of old plastic tube that I found lying around and that's going to sit just on the inside of all of this with a bit of luck. I nearly forgot there are sort of ribs where the battery would have run inside here. One out. And it needs to sit more or less there doesn't matter exactly, but it needs to sit the opposite side to where the plug is because that's how I've worked it all out. And we need to find some way of squeezing that. There, twist that a little bit. There's the plug. Now this, if all my measurements are correct, will go all the way in. And it has. Oh! If I pull that out again. Oh. And then red. We've got charging. Hopefully you can see that, it's turned blue. So it's fully charged. Parts all cleaned. Ready to go back together. Seems to be in. That seems happy. I think that's the way the wire goes. This needs to be able to slide in there and sit there, I think. Not sure if it's there or oh, there, I think. And then we're going to need this bit. Now, did I need to put this on first? Looks like I did. Let's lift that up a little bit. Oh, that seems to be there. I've been playing with this for about 20 minutes and it's just popped down into place. You can see I just squeezed it and it just went straight into place and that bit is in and I don't know why it wouldn't go before and I don't know why it went in this time but it just did, it just dropped into place. So I can't tell you what the solution is because I don't actually know what the what was happening. But before anything else manages to change, we'll at least get these halves together. Uh, 
And the problem is, <laughs> I bet that went under. Oh, it did, didn't it? That went underneath. <laughs> right, I think I managed to get that bit on now. And of course, this is the part that gave us all the trouble before. In. That like that. It's, I've never known one of these screwdrivers that where they you've got to get it just the right spot and then it sort of clicks together like that. It's uh, worrying. That's working. That's working. That's working. So no, that's never going to stay in there, is it? It's just popping back out every time I push it in. So, I don't think that's going to work. That needs to go on there, and of course this needs to slide up. Oh, it's gone straight in! <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting that. And then that needs to go there. Remember which side had the screw now. I wonder if it matters. Let's... Right, as I said, I can't remember if this screw was this side or that side, but I think for now it can go this side and I'll swap it if it's wrong. Right, usual bit of wood. Uh, we're on low apparently. Same screws as usual. Ooh. <laughs> it is on the lowest setting though. Right, let's try going up one. Oh. Let's try going up, I think that's four. Ooh, this battery's not sounding very healthy. Let's go up a bit more. That's five. Well, that seems a bit strange, doesn't it? Let's try putting it on high. Got plenty of speed then. Ooh, it seems to die as soon as it has to do any work. Well, that's very odd, isn't it? Look at that, that's working absolutely fine. But it's really struggling with the screws. It's just got no power. Well, that is strange. That's on low. I presume that's on number four talk setting. And it immediately can't cope. So something is obviously not quite right. I, I think it must be that motor. I've been suspicious of that motor all the way along. I mean, you can see it works perfectly, but put it under a strain and it struggles. I don't think it's the battery. I mean, it could be the battery, but I don't see why it should be. <laughs> That's fine. Got that. Rubbish. Well, there we have 
a mystery. It's finished, but it's more that than it is that. Yeah, there's definitely something odd because if you watch this, if I get it going fast and then push it onto the wood with no screws, watch what happens. To almost stop it, and that's on the high. Sorry, that's on the low setting. Put it on the high setting. Again, almost stop it. So. There is something very odd about that motor.